I'm Stacy Kostovicki, Executive Director of Gulf Coast Kids Health. Um, Gulf Coast Kids House exists to provide a better intervention system for children who have been egregiously abused. So gotcha. children are now able to come to one child-friendly facility. We do their medical exams here. We do a recorded interview with them so that they don't have to repeat their story of abuse over and over again. We have three full-time prosecutors that prosecute the cases out of the building, and we have a team of mental health counselors and family advocates who help the family recover from their experience. I got involved with Gulf Coast Kids House way back and probably over 14 years ago as a volunteer with some of their marketing efforts and um, remained a volunteer with them for several years until I took the position as executive director. We don't really have a normal day. <laughs> we were joking about that this morning, um, but in terms of client serve, some days we can have... A, no appointments and other days we have a lobby that's stacked full of kids that are coming here for not only medical exams but depositions as well as counseling um, and on top of that behind the scenes we've got our three child abuse prevention educators that are out there in the schools teaching kids about how to stay safe and how to tell adults if they're not safe and our two um, individuals with our marketing and outreach that are out there just pounding the pavement raising money and awareness about Gulf Coast Kids House. Um, average day is hard to say, but each year we provide services to about 3,000 children. Uh, this year, in addition to the 3,000 that we're providing intervention services for, we will have educated about 39,000 students in Escambia County. My favorite thing about working here is the staff. Um, I've always said that my role is to support the people in the building so that they can support the kids that need our help. And the team that works here is committed, they're passionate, they are just, they show up and give it their all every single day. We love working with Chain Reaction and the Get Grounded Project because we're able to give superhero pots to the children that are coming here for therapy services. And these children are learning how to reestablish boundaries, they're learning self-esteem, they're learning that the abuse that happened to them is not their fault. And these pots are, the Get Grounded pots, are a great way to reemphasize to them that they can come back from this experience, that this experience will shape them, but it won't, um, it won't ruin them and won't ruin their future, that they have a bright future ahead of them. I think Gulf Coast Kids House has done a great job of making child abuse part of a community discussion. It's not something that a lot of people want to talk about, and... We've really focused over these last few years particularly to get more of the prevention efforts out there and to get a dialogue started because it's child abuse is something that's always happened. It's always been there. It's just that people haven't been willing to talk about it. And the thing that I'm most proud of is, first of all, we've been able to change the intervention for these kids. We've made it more trauma-friendly. And then secondly, we're creating a community of protectors, people that know what to look for and feel confident in reporting if they think a child is being hurt. I have a vision of Gulf Coast Kids House having two buildings. One um, focused solely on child abuse prevention and recovery and one still focusing on that intervention piece and hopefully that intervention building will be tiny and that prevention building will be massive. Um, the advice that I would give anyone considering working with a nonprofit organization is do it. There, there's no better feeling to me than going home at the end of the day and knowing that you've had an impact and knowing that you did something beyond just creating a widget. Um, that's really important to me and I think it's really important to Chain Reaction teens because otherwise they wouldn't be involved in the program. So I always tell people when they're exploring their career, volunteer with a not-for-profit organization first because it's kind of like a dressing room. You get to try on different roles and different um, causes that you might be passionate about without having to fully commit, but I absolutely love working for not-for-profits, and I think if anyone gave it a chance, they would, they would too. This is our conference room. Um, this is available to the public. It's one of our main outreach tools, so if people want to use it, we don't charge for it. We just ask that we have a couple of minutes of time to tell them about our services. And we also do all our case review in here. So we review the most egregious cases of abuse 
have the whole team from inside and outside of the building together to discuss those cases and how, what else can we be doing to help that family. These are our family interview rooms, so when a family comes here, they meet with a family advocate, and then the child will stay up in the lobby and play, and the family advocate will come back here with a case coordinator, and they'll do what we call a specialized interview. And that interview focuses not only on what brought the family here today, but also what are some of those other stressors that they're facing at home so that the advocates can start to gather resources and referrals in the community for them. First of all, they're just colorful and they're fun for kids to look at when they're going back to their exam room and things. But the other meaningful part about this is that one in eight kids in Escambia County is in an abuse report. So. When you look at the sheer number of these tiles and then you picture that one out of every eight of them is impacted by abuse, it's a really telling visual. It's a lot less scary and traumatic than the courtroom. Absolutely. And we use that courtroom. Um, the advocates will talk through with the family and the child what to expect when they go to court because that can be pretty intimidating even as an adult. And this is our medical exam room. Um, we have a full bathroom here. Sometimes the children that we bring here are dirty and they need a bath, so we've got a bathtub. This is our distraction station, so when children are getting their exams, they can just play with these as like a tactile distraction. They also um, are able to change the colors of the tube. There's a little missing part to it, but they can also affect whether the bubbles are happening or not. And we have fish that go on the wall. And obviously we've got um, painted ceiling tiles and paintings around. This is probably our most sterile room of everything, but it's it needs to be white because of documentation of any injuries. This part is really cool. This is Jane's closet. So this is... Um, the community fully supports this closet. So these are new and gently used clothing. We have diapers, we have wipes, we have toiletries, just anything that a family might need. Because a lot of times, if, if a family is struggling to make ends meet, they can't focus at all on the emotional and mental security of their child. So we try to fulfill any of those physical needs that we can so that they can really focus on that next level with their child. So all of this is available free to the families we serve. Just drop it off at the front door. Okay, that Monday is through, pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, Monday through Friday, eight to five. And don't worry about whether or not we accept the donations because we have a really great partnership with Goodwill. Mm -hmm. So if we don't use the items or they're a little too tattered for what we'd want to give our clients, we give them to Goodwill and Goodwill gives us vouchers. That way if our families need like dishes or bedding or things like that that we don't have, they can go to Goodwill and get it. This is the play therapy room. So they work with the little kids in this room to do trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. So that's therapy that's specifically focused on the trauma these children have experienced. Um, they do things like teaching boundaries by using hula hoops. They'll talk with kids about personal space and that you, everyone has their own hula hoop and only people you, who you tell can come in there can come inside your hula hoop. They also talk about um, deep breathing with kids because they once a child has been abused, they're very likely to have triggers. So they might be in an art class and the art teacher looks like they're a fender, so they start getting upset. So how do they calm themselves down? Through breathing. So they teach kids breathing by using pinwheels because you can visually see your breath and also through bubbles because every child knows that you need a big deep breath to blow a bubble, but you have to blow out real slow if you don't want to pop it. So it's a way to teach breathing techniques in an easier way for kids to understand. This is their group therapy room. So this is the room where they'll work with the older um, older children as well as the non-offending caregivers. So it's important with therapy that if you're working with a child, you're also working with their caregiver that's at home so they can reinforce what's being learned at therapy. So that's kind of where this happens. And Group therapy is proven to be really effective, especially for caregivers, because abuse in itself is very isolating. People think that it could only happen to them, and they're you know, the only person in the world that's experiencing this, and then you get in a room full of other people that have had a similar situation, 
and it kind of immediately breaks down that barrier. Um, of course, there are more barriers to get through, but it, it's certainly helpful to get over the hump.